back in September of 2018, and wow, but does that already seem like a technology lifetime ago, Apple's chief operating officer and head of watch and health products, Jeff Williams, took to the stage at the company's annual September event to announce Apple Watch Series 4 and its bold new edge-to-edge -edge display. But he also announced something else, something far more important, irregular heartbeat notifications and the ability to take an electrocardiogram in a watch on your freaking wrist. It shipped in the US on December 6th. It shipped in much of the EU and in Hong Kong on March 27. And right now, today, it's shipping in Canada. But as always, there's way more to the story. So hit subscribe, show you can that bell gizmo so you don't miss the next video, and let's dive into it. I'm Rene Ritchie and this is Vector. The original Apple Watch had a problem. It needed a way to accurately count calories. Apple hadn't yet landed on their health and fitness focus for the gizmo, but they knew activity rings and workouts would be a key part of it, and so they absolutely had to nail calorie count. So, they ended up including a heart rate monitor primarily for that purpose. They included it in the telemetry for workouts, added an app so that you could check your heart rate, and even a cute way to send your heartbeat to a loved one but it was mostly there to make sure those calories got counted and that move ring got filled consistently, reliably, accurately, each day, every day. Now, the way product development works at Apple is interesting. I've gone over it before in previous videos. For example, sure, marketing tries to figure out what new features will be the most appealing and competitive each year. Individual engineers have also come up with, pitched, and driven some of the most transformative features we've gotten over the years. But there's another huge contributor to Apple's product development that doesn't get addressed enough, including by me, and that's us, customers, users. There is simply no amount of marketing or engineering or quality assurance effort that can go into any product that comes anywhere close to millions and millions of customers hitting it. Forget on a daily basis. How about hourly, minutely? And oh wow, do we send feedback. Not just angry forum and social media post complaints either. Some of us write letters. That's how and why Apple started to understand just how important not just the fitness but the health aspects of the Apple Watch were to us and how much further they could be taken, how much further we wanted them to be taken. So over time, Apple added elevated and low heart rate notifications to watchOS, but the letters kept coming and news reports began springing up detailing how the Apple Watch was alerting people to potentially dangerous medical conditions and prompting them to go to the doctor and get the help they needed. Before doing anything else, to validate what they were doing, Apple partnered with Stanford on a study to see if the sensor in the watch was accurate enough to pick up something more than just lower elevated heart rates, atrial fibrillation, which is one of the most common causes of strokes and heart failures. The study was launched in November of 2017 and ultimately enrolled more than 400,000 participants. The end results were, of the participants who wore an Apple Watch and ECG patch at the same time, almost 80% received the notification and showed AFib on the ECG patch, and 98% received the notification and showed other clinically relevant arrhythmias on the ECG patch. I don't know for sure, but I get the sense that for a brand new product that was better than even Apple had cautiously hoped for. And since Apple had been building optical heart rate sensors into Apple Watch since the beginning, the feature would work for people going back almost to that beginning, Apple Watch Series 1. For electrocardiogram, for ECG though, Apple needed something more, an electrical heart rate sensor as well. So Apple built one into what would eventually become Apple Watch Series 4. They added electrodes to the back crystal and to the digital crown. Then Apple launched a preclinical study with 2,000 subjects and a clinical trial of about 600 subjects to validate the ability of the ECG app to accurately classify an ECG recording into AFib and sinus rhythm. The results were compared to a 12-lead ECG by a cardiologist, and the ECG app demonstrated 98.3% sensitivity in classifying AFib and 99.6% specificity in classifying sinus rhythm in classifiable recordings. Results that, again, for a company just getting into consumer health with a relatively new cutting edge product that, yeah, sure, has the resources and will of Apple behind it was still expectation blowingly cool. Apple announced the new irregular heart rate notifications in ECG app at their September event in 2018, shipped them in the US on December 6th, 2018, in 19 European countries, including France, Germany, Italy, Spain, and the United Kingdom, as well as Hong Kong on March 27th, 2019, and now today, Canada. 
Apple has to gain approval from the regulatory agencies in each and every country for the feature to roll out. And that means not only making applications and presenting research data and results in accordance to the policies and criteria of each and every agency, but working with local experts to make sure the community is introduced to, is made aware of, and becomes familiar with the technology. There's been a bit of reactionary, sensationalized coverage about the quote unquote dangers of everyone walking around with an ECG app on their wrists and potentially flooding medical personnel with spurious, anxiety-driven false alarms. And that stuff sucks, like really, really sucks, because sure, it gets clicks and watch time, but it also makes people already misinformed and afraid of technology even more confused and apprehensive. And those are often the people who would and should benefit from it the most. Apple has teams, including team leads who are still practicing cardiologists, spending 20% of their time on call in hospitals, working on this technology and on getting it not just approved, but proven and accepted. And even at Apple scale, they can only handle so many countries and bureaucracies at once. In the US, that meant getting de novo clearance from the FDA. Now in Canada, they've secured a medical device license from Health Canada. So I get the feeling Apple tries to be efficient about it and tackles the largest markets that can reach the most people in the quickest way possible. And if you don't have it yet, I know how frustrating that feels and how left out you feel and just keep giving Apple that feedback, telling them how important it is to you and how much you want it because they've got a list and they're working through it and they legit wanna get it everywhere and to all of us as well. So here's the deal. You can't use the irregular heart rate notifications or the ECG app anywhere outside the countries where they've been officially launched. Not only are they locked to devices that were sold in those countries, they can use core location, including cell tower location, to make sure that's where they're being set up. Unfortunately, Apple just can't risk making it available in places where it hasn't been officially approved for use. Also, you have to be over the age of 22. In the countries where Apple has made the irregular heart rate notifications and ECG app available so far, getting approval for people under the age of 22 requires additional, more involved processes, and those just aren't there yet. If you're in the US, parts of the EU, Hong Kong, or as of right now, Canada, and 22 or over, you're good to go. Make sure your Apple Watch is paired with your iPhone. For irregular heart rate notifications, you'll need an Apple Watch Series 1 or later. For the ECG app, because it requires that additional electrical heart rate monitor hardware, you'll need an Apple Watch Series 4 or later if you're watching this in the future. Next, go to the Watch app, tap on the Heart tab, and start the setup. You have to set up both the irregular heart rate notifications and the ECG app separately because both are meant to be as educational as they are technical. Apple wants these features to help monitor your health and potentially save your life, not to increase your anxiety, feed any compulsions, or flood any medical channels. So they walk you through it, warning you not just to take multiple random sequential ECGs, for example, but to use it when you feel symptoms like a rapid or skipped heartbeat, or you feel like something similarly wrong. Once irregular heartbeat notifications are set up, there's nothing else for you to do. Just wear your watch, and if you get one, contact your doctor. Once the ECG app is set up, you can take one whenever you feel the need. Just launch the app, make sure you're not moving, like sit down and rest your wrist on a table, touch a finger from your opposite hand to the digital crown and keep it there for 30 seconds. If you lose contact or move around too much, the watch will alert you and start the countdown over. Once it's done, you can do things like add any additional symptoms you might feel, and then, depending on the severity and emergent nature of those symptoms, the watch can either give you a PDF to send on to your doctor, or in cases that seem extremely urgent, prompt to call emergency services right away. So far, at least anecdotally, the results seem to be good. There are news reports of people receiving the alerts or using the ECG app, contacting their doctors, and getting treatment for conditions that could have been life-threatening that they might not otherwise have even or ever been aware of. But those are the most high profile cases. What's far more important is the millions of people that now have access to this technology all day, every day. Because a watch is something that's not only almost always with us, but almost always on us. And that makes exactly the type of features Apple's working on so beneficial. The potential of technology in the human body is just so tremendous. CuriosityStream has this great documentary on it called, not surprisingly, The Body. Here's the blurb. The brain was once thought to be the body's control tower, issuing commands to the other organs. But scientists are discovering that communication flows between all organs in our bodies. They transmit messages that can boost immunity, improve memory, strengthen bones, and even lengthen lifespans. 
Curiosity Stream is the world's first streaming service to address our lifelong quest to learn, explore, and understand. And there's so much more there. Just go to curiositystream.com slash vector for unlimited access to the world's top documentaries and nonfiction series, and enter the promo code vector to start your membership completely free for the first 30 days. Thanks Curiosity Stream, and thanks to all of you for supporting the show. If you're in Canada, you can download the watchOS update and set up irregular heart rate notifications and the ECG app right now. If you're in the United States, parts of the European Union, or Hong Kong, and you haven't set them up yet, go ahead and give them a try. And if you've been using them for a while already, let me know what you think about them and about health technologies in general. Hit like if you do, hit subscribe if you haven't already, and then hit up the comments below and let me know what you want to see next. Thank you so much for watching, and see you next video.